Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Postman tutorial, we are going to finish our end-to-end -end test case and also write some of the validation, some of the tests to actually figure out that the issue has been created. Yes, we'll check the status code and etc. And then we will also understand the validation of the exact values within that particular issue. Okay. So how we are going to do it? So once the issue got created within Jira, okay. So for example, we got this ID and the key successfully. First thing we can validate is that the response code is actually 201 created, right? So, so this is the first test that we can actually write in this particular request here, which is the post call. Okay. So in the test, we don't have any tests, so we can simply go in the snippets and we can say, okay, the first thing we want to validate is that actually the status code is 201. Okay, when this particular request gets triggered. All right, then I can also just say PM response to be okay and then after to be you'll see that you you get different properties right so accepted bad requests etc so if you just keep scrolling down you will see that status code code must be 202 if you are checking for acceptance bad request is 400 right so we can check for the success there okay so which is basically uh success is for any status code which is uh, 2 200 or 2xx okay so because created is a success so we can check for the success as well right so this is basically uh we can say okay status code is 201 and uh success okay i can rename the test as with whatever text i want all right so now this is one of the tests that i have written here now the next thing is i can write more tests obviously you can basically go ahead and uh, feel free to add more validations check the uh, json and then from the json you know like if you want to validate uh, the exact uh, structure of the json as well you can write test as per the previous videos that i have explained okay so now from here this is one of the validation for this particular request that yes issue get created and you are getting success code but after that you want to also validate the content of the issue that got created right and in previous video we have already written the pre-request script wherein we are storing the issue title so how we can validate in the new issue that, that got created the issue title that we have passed in the body actually matches with the issue that got created, right? So we'll go to the Jira REST API documentation here, right? And in order to get the issue that got created, we have this endpoint, right? So basically REST API three issue, and then we have to just pass issue ID or key. Okay, so I can simply copy it, all right? And what I'll do is I will just duplicate maybe or let me create a new request here okay so i will say add request and i will say get issue okay and then in get issue what exactly we have to pass on is it's a get call we know that right and then where we have to trigger this so the first thing is basically the endpoint is this okay and then we have to also specify what we have to specify the issue id or key okay so that will be that also needs to be specified and then the host okay so host we know that we are working with the host name which we have stored in this environment variable and we have chosen this environment rcv academy live so host name and then the endpoint and then we have to specify the key right so whichever issue gets created here okay as part of this create issue type story okay i have to somehow i have to somehow get this particular key okay let me go to the body here i have to somehow get this key or the id or because i can i can pass in the id or key either of those okay and then store it in a variable prior to sending this prior to sending the get issue call for this particular issue okay so storing this value is absolutely very simple we have seen multiple times right how we can do it we can basically go into the tests all right so here in the test itself what i can do is i can say we know that we can store the response okay so i can say okay constant response create a variable response and then pm dot response dot json okay and we know that this is the json response okay so which has the id key and the self value there in the curly braces now this statement here will get me this 
JSON response from the response of this call, which is the create issue and store it in the JavaScript variable response. Now from this variable, I can basically store the key or ID. Okay. To store a key or ID or fetch the key or ID from the response. It's pretty simple. We'll simply store it in a collection variable. So I can say, okay, PM dot collection variables dot set and then we will simply say response and then at just root level or basically the first level is either id or key so i can simply say response dot id dot key or dot self to store any of these values right in a variable so now if i have to set uh, any of the variable i'll first define what i'll define a string which will be the variable name okay so i'll say okay this is created issue key okay so let me store this key all right and then what will be the value the value will be fetched from the response and then dot key right so this will basically fetch me response will hold this particular object and then when we say dot key it will fetch me this particular value and this value will get stored in a variable create issue key at the collection level because i'm saying pm dot collection variables dot set okay so in the test i am doing this particular step all right so now when i am triggering this particular create issue type story then the response is being checked that yes it is successful right and also the variable will be created basically create issue key will be created and the key will be stored in there if the variable name already exists the the value or this create issue already exists then the key the new value will be stored in that particular variable here so if i go to the collection okay so you'll see there is no variable name which is create issue key right so if i run this request now you will see a new variable name got created and the key will be assigned okay so i won't run it as of now okay let me uh okay or let me try uh, run it and then show you so i'll i've ran it and now if i go to the collection here you will see create issue key and then zcsp 154 got saved here okay so now i can use this variable in my next call which is get issue call okay now the get issue call if you see the documentation it it will accept id or key in the path right so i can simply after the path i can simply just say okay create uh was it a create issue key or what was the name okay it should be actually created okay anyways um create issue key okay so i will rename it to created because it, this is the created so it makes more sense created issue key okay and I will delete the old one. Okay. So let me save it and I'll save this as well. And if I run this now again, you will see another issue key, basically collection variable created issue key with the new value will be set, right? So created issue key makes more sense instead of create issue key. So now I will use this created issue key. Okay. So now this rest API three issue with the key, with the issue key that got created, uh, the new issue that got created in the previous call okay in this call will be passed here in the get issue and issue detail should be fetched as part of this particular request so if i send this now because this is a get call so method is get and then if i try to show you the response right okay so issue does not exist or do you do not have the permission to see it okay so basically this says issue not found and it is at zcsp 155 okay let me do one thing let me try storing the issue id okay let me try storing issue id and also try to analyze the console what exactly got passed okay so if i see here you will see that it it actually passed this you know uh, zcsp uh, hyphen 155 which should be fine there is a host name there is exact same path for the get issue right so this is the get issue endpoint which is slash rest api3 issue and then issue id okay so it should actually work but let me see if it is an issue with the key or id if we say for example maybe if we pass the id it starts working so let me expand it and instead of the key what i'll do is i'll say okay store the id okay so the id will be stored so let me send this request again the create issue so a new id it's generated new issue got created there is a new id 10183 okay and then if you also try to see the test results you will see that yes status code was 201 and then success so everything is passing for this particular request let me save it and now go to the get issue okay so here you will see now this is a 
1.0183 okay which is the same id because we can use id or key so this is the same id right for the getting so let me send it again okay so this is strange so looks like there is some permission issue for this particular one so let me figure that out okay and then we will resume the lecture and i'll explain you what permission issue what exactly what was exactly happening okay guys i think i did a very blunder mistake basically uh, you you see this permission right so i should have missed the permission so basically you'll see that i haven't selected any of the permission here right so it says inherited from the parent but at the parent level i haven't set anything so i'll just change it to basic right and then it will pick the username and password right so basically the auth should be picked up okay so if i send this now it should actually fetch me the details right so basically this was the these are some of the issues that you might you know face so you'll see that we were not having permission and that message itself clearly indicated that yes it's a something with the authorization and i checked the authorization and there was it was defaulting to what the parent was and at the root level i haven't configured so that is why i have to go ahead and configure this authorization here for this get issue call to get the issue detail right now we have got all the issue details here okay now in the issue i have to go ahead and validate whatever i have passed the detail for example in the create issue type story i have passed the text right i have passed in the in the body i have passed in this dynamic or random title i want to go ahead and validate that the title within the get issue is exactly matches to the title that i have passed okay so if i scroll down you will see okay somewhere there should be uh, the title here so description functionality or expressed okay that's not the one the one that i passed in let's see where exactly it is. summary okay so you'll see try to generate the rss system maybe it will synthesize this is something which we want to validate that actually when we do the get issue call then the summary which is match uh, matches with whatever i have passed in here okay in the create issue type similarly we'll we'll do this in the next video to validate this in the response of the get issue similarly you can put the same approach in any number of test cases that you have for your real time projects okay so this is more of an end to end automated api testing now we are basically using the javascript uh, and and postman capability basically whatever javascript capability postman provides and javascript capabilities within postman to write the automated api testing so that's all for this video in the next video we will continue further with the one more step in the api test automation or a api end to end test automation so that's all for this video keep learning keep growing thank you